All right. Uh, welcome, everyone. We're uh, episode five today, tonight, um, wherever you are. And it's going to be about contributing to Leap as well as uh, going into uh, the tools that we have, the features we have, and, and how we can do this with uh, Sleep packages and Sleep itself. So Lubosh is going to kind of cover it. Um, and feel free to comment on the side if you're interested. And um, Knuff and myself will interject if we have to. Go ahead, Lubash, take it away. Yeah, thank you guys for having me here. Um, so we've had already workshops about how to submit your initial package to, to factory, right, to Pubble lead. Uh, we've had OBS basics, so we actually know how to work with tools. And uh, let's talk about why you should actually contribute to Leap and how to do that. So uh, Leap is, if you don't know, Leap is probably the, well, it is the most downloaded distribution out of the OpenSUSE project. Uh, I would say, as far as numbers go. So uh, let me screen share so you can actually see where to get it from. So uh, as you know, we have few distributions, right? Tumbleweed, which most of the contributors will be focusing on, and then Leap. Uh, you can see also 15.6 beta, which is uh, which is currently the hottest uh, as far as Leap goes. Then Leap Micro and MicroS, which is essentially Tumbleweed. Um, so let's let's actually have a look at these two. Um, if you know how to submit things to Tumbleweed, submitting to Leap shouldn't be a problem, but uh, Leap is a little bit special. If you would open packaging for Leap, which is uh, one of the wiki pages, let me send it to the chat. It's uh, It mentions actually, Whoa, whoa, I have to close that, otherwise I will hear echo. Uh, it mentions a few things. It mentions that the uh, that Leap actually consists of community packages and packages from SUSE Linux Enterprise. And that's, that's like, uh, that will be one of the complications that you have to get along with. This document uh, or, or the page packaging for Leap describes the entire project, the layout, if you scroll through, you will see that we have actually multiple projects, which is uh, where, where people actually go wrong initially. We will cover that uh, in a minute. But uh, for the beginning, it's good to realize that uh, it's community packages where you know everybody is free to contribute as long as everything builds, right? That's important. And then you have the packages from SUSE Linux Enterprise, which we kind of refer to as the stable core of the distribution. And these actually require a little bit more effort, right? Because we are literally updating the package in SLES and then we inherit it to Leap. And that's something that you have to keep in mind. So it may not take like uh, one minute, five minutes. It may be a longer effort. You, you may get like special permissions or approvals on your feature requests. So um, let's say that you are packaging a package uh, which, which requires update of some library uh, in SLES. What would you do? So if you, if you really know what to do, you can just do the submit requests and that's this described below. We can mirror them, but let's suppose that you are a beginner that just started to package. You've submitted your package to Tumbleweed and in order to actually get it in Leap, you have to update one library. So first, uh, maybe it's important actually to check whether it's coming from SLES or not. I think that that's one aspect that we should definitely know how to do. I do it very easily and you can do it too. Just go to the OpenSUSE Leap project in OBS that would be project. You can just look it up in search. That will work too. But this is the URL, right? So let's say uh, to make it simple, we know that, for example, bash would be inherited uh, from SLES. Uh, but you can actually look in packages for Leap. So it's not in Leap. Let's look if it's actually inherited from somewhere else, bash. And I can see that it's actually inherited from SLES 15 SP4. Okay. And this is where the problem happens. So you maybe need to update it to a newer version, right? You can click through, you can actually see what the version is and so on. But let's say we have to update it. So what do we do? You can for sure fork the package, just like you would do with any, any other package in factory and so on. But uh, then actually you have to submit it to SUSE SD 15 SP4. And that's, that's tricky. It's not a typical submit request. It, uh, it actually requires what we refer to as mirroring of requests in between OBS, where we build the community part, and IBS, which is the SUSE internal build service. And this is where it gets a little bit messy. Uh, so let me let me actually look up the mirroring. 
on the packaging side, you can actually find the reference here, right? Awaiting uh, package in leap, and in case of Suze Slee, it has to be mirrored. Details are not important. The, the, the important part is that somebody has to review it and mirror it. And that, that can be a little bit frightening at the beginning. So what, what I would actually recommend instead is just go to our feature tracker, which you can easily find in, in the packaging. I think it's in the section. Right here, uh, public feature tracker. And here you can actually describe your problem. I'm trying to update package XYZ and I need to update certain library, right? And we can actually help you like mem test is for example, also example where we were updating package less. And uh, we can coordinate here. And that's that's what I would recommend everybody who is actually stuck on updating the package and figure out that he actually has to touch something in Slash. Just open a feature tracker, easy as that, and we will guide you for the rest. You don't have to read even the wiki pages. Uh, that would be the first good, uh, good recommendation. If you are lucky uh, and you just update community package, uh, which doesn't have like very sophisticated dependencies, maybe one or two, and they are both community packages or you don't have to update anything, then, then it's basically the same as Tumbleweed. But uh, again, it goes back to mixing of SLI and Lee packages. Uh, you have to know where to update, where to send the update or the package to. And that goes to the structure of the project. Uh, can I just stop screen sharing so we can like talk? Yeah, good. Uh, so as, as again, community packages, sleep packages, right? And we have to mix these two together, which, which creates a little bit of complexity on the project layout. So you have, in fact, three projects. One is called Backports, OpenSUSE Backports, where we actually keep all the community stuff. So if it's community package, it goes to Backports. I will show the exact project name later. If it's something which is in SLES, then it goes to SUSE Slee project, which in fact is in IBS. And if it's OpenSUSE branding related, then it goes to a project called OpenSUSE Leap, which is, I would say, confusing because normally you would just send everything to OpenSUSE Leap and you would expect that's correct place, right? It's not the case. That's literally for branding packages. But we have a nice, nice little, how would I call it, trick that if the package already exists within Leap, and you are just trying to update it. It will actually redirect submit request where it should be. So let's let's go now to the uh, screen share, and uh, I will show the project layout. I think it was on the uh, what was it? Teaching Leap, right? One seventy-five, so it's readable, and uh, it goes to the project structure. And so here we go. You remember how I mentioned backwards? So again. We have all the projects listed. So let's say that you are updating package in Leap 15 SP, uh, Leap 15.6, or maybe you are adding a new package. If it's something which is not concerning any sort of open source branding, you know, icons and stuff, it's literally a tool. This is where it should go. You can see that we have uh, yeah over 9,000 packages too, including all the games and stuff that you would uh, normally find in Leap. So this is where you submit it, not open source. Uh, 15 point, uh, leave 15.6, but backwards, okay? And it's also described here. If this is for updates, that's after release, not, doesn't have to concern us at the moment. Uh, here you have open to the leap 15.6. That uh, is common mistake. So if you are a new packager, you want to submit your package that you just submitted to leap, you should not submit it here. You should always submit it to backwards, right? Here, uh, if you actually check what's inside a project, which is the, I think the most useful thing that I can show you, it's literally, yeah, slightly over hundred packages and most of them are related to branding. You can see that they have open source suffixes or product building things, uh, you know, specific branding, which should not be in SLES, uh, or, or we actually kind of, uh, change the behavior. If you build it in SLES or leave, these are all the packages branding related that should be here and kernel modules. So that would be the case for Leap 15.6. As long as it's an existing package, you can always submit it to Leap 15.6. And we have little trick that redirects the submit request to backwards if it's packaged in backwards. But I strongly recommend people just to stick with backwards. Once you are actually trying to introduce a new package to release, the, I don't know, SP of Leap 15.5, you would actually use something like OpenSUSE backwards Leap 15 SP5 update. Okay. 
uh, but not during development. Like right now, we are at beta. We will be soon transitioning to RC. This is really what you where you want to contribute. Uh, if if you are RV7 enthusiast, then you know yours would be a step project. But uh, I think that uh, the target audience is probably not interested in this one. Uh, so uh, when it comes to non-free packages like Opera, I don't know, and uh, and stuff that uh, you know we kind of built from binaries. Not uh, not from source. Then we have the non-free project. You can also check what we have. I think there is Opera, a few few libraries, some firmware packages, and that's basically yeah, and Steam, right? So I would suppose this won't be uh, the case for most. So again, uh, what you are interested in is the backwards, okay? And again, the way why the project is structured uh, so difficultly, uh, you know, in a so difficult way is because we are trying to mix uh, packages for SUSE Linux Enterprise with community packages and ship it for SUSE SLE users uh, in form of package hub and, and for community users in form of leap, which, which kind of forces us to use such structure so we can rebrand packages and so on. Uh, so sorry for the complexity, but that, that's the cost for uh, actually mixing C binaries with uh, with community packages. So uh, that would be that would be the structure. I really recommend people to remember two things. So I'm trying to update package uh, first. Check where it's coming from. If it's coming from backports, you know, like uh, in case of I don't know KDE. Uh, you know, you can see that this is a backport package. If you are looking for something for SLAS, you will see SUSE SLE. Therefore, the updates has to go to SUSE SLE, which is uh, basically a mirrored project. You can still see the package and everything. You will not be able to see build results or anything because we are literally so uh, syncing sources with rsync in between, uh, in between uh, internal SUSE build service and external, uh, you know, external OBS. But uh, you can make submit requests. I think that we will even have some. If I go to wait a second, let's do SP6 GA uh, project. I think that we have some requests in here. Maybe they will be already cleaned up. Yeah, some of them are here. So, for example, Axel is actually submitting requests against less. As, as mentioned, uh, somebody has to manually mirror them. And uh, that's 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 where it's not uh, very easy because we don't have two-way synchronization of comments and states in between submissions. So state submission in OBS may be getting activity, but unfortunately we cannot simply uh, project it to the public service. So it really requires manual communication, email, or even the even better would be inside such feature, you know, for your package where we can help you and make sure that uh, you can succeed in, in getting it working. Again, uh, ideally, all the submissions should happen before the beta. Uh, with beta, we would like to already start stabilizing the distribution. But as far as uh, you are maybe just adding something community related to the, and we don't have to touch the binaries, like uh, we can we can add stuff also after the beta. But you know, any changes to SUSE Linux Enterprise, these guys get really conservative with beta and even more with rc and so on so we really have to plan in advance which is the key of getting changes to leave uh, if you are looking for some example on how to actually build package for multiple distributions let's say that you would like to build a package in a different way for tumbleweed leap slow roll which is for example the case of definitions of our uh, repositories let me again go to uh, can somebody paste it to the chat? I'm not sure if I can go here. Maybe I can. Let me just. Right. Hello. Here. You can actually check this. Oh. Guys, can somebody please uh, write this? Command inside YouTube, like I can't do it. Doesn't seem to be. So just copy it and. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can do it. Yeah, thank you, Deka. So yeah, um, the if you look up really easily, open to the repos. Uh, you know, we can just go to the project, open to the open to the repos on GitHub, and then you can go to our spec file. 
you can actually see how we build it uh, for different versions. By the way, these SUSE versions, they usually, uh, they usually correspond right with the release. So we have 15.5 and, and corresponding digits. If you are interested in details and you really want to understand how it's done, again, go for packaging for leap. And we have a very nice table, right, of all of these versions, corresponding SUSE version, SLE version, which should always correspond. You can see SP0, SP1, right? And so on, SP5, uh, SP6 should have 150600. Not sure why that is 15000. That should be corrected. Ah, here it seems to be correct. Uh, so you can actually do that. Uh, I think it, it's uh, typically you will use it for like not exact version, but you will say, okay, so. Uh, maybe in Leap, uh, this library that I need is only available since Leap 15.2. So I would only make sure that uh, we build it on SUSE version larger than 15.200, something like that, right? That would be the typical use case when you have to diverge from Tumbleweed. Uh, here we also uh, built for slow roll. So I really recommend to actually use this as some sort of uh, guidance on how can I actually make sure that builds against leap or, or even leap micro, which we have covered. We have a macro in, in the RPM spec is leap micro, which can actually, you know, ensure that this code actually gets triggered only on leap micro. And, and then you kind of drive uh, with, uh, with if analysis, uh, the entire build process. So really a nice case study. It covers actually all of the distributions that we currently have, which is why I would like to use it as a reference. And this, this package is related to branding, uh, you know, open to the repos, right? Uh, so, of course, uh, it's hosted. It's hosted here in 15.6. That's why we don't have it in backport. So, it doesn't actually end up in Package Hub because uh, then uh, SUSE customers would get to install it, which is unwanted, right? Which is why we keep it separate as a branding package to kind of get you, uh, you know, some understanding of why we actually have this project uh, separated from backwards. So you can see it here. Uh, so use this; it's it's kind of easy. I actually got inspired by Neil Gompa and his, I believe, RPM repos open source package originally. Um, yeah. So nice case study. Any any comments on 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 the YouTube doc? We are roughly at twelve minutes. So if I could summarize it in like five points, I want people to remember that we have a, a Leap Features project on Pagur. Again, if I may ask you to, to paste the link, uh, just uh, just go code open to the org, uh, Leap Features issues, and you can just report, hey, I need to get this library updated so I can do X, Y, Z, and we will help you. In most, you cannot expect that we will update something community for you. You know, there it's always up to maintainer and, or if you want to help, you can do it yourselves. But this is mostly for cases where really you need coordination. Maybe some of the dependencies needs to be touched on three side. This is exactly the place where we want to track it. Typically what I would do is I would open corresponding Chira, right? We have them linked here, for example, uh, for boost. Uh, we would have internal discussion, like, do we want to do it in Slash or should we actually move the change to uh, to OpenSUSE? In this case, Boost is special for to give you this little story. Uh, we actually have multiple versions of Boost in Slash, but uh, I think one of the last versions was actually also probably offered in Leap uh, in form of compact package, right? Uh, the, the version is part of the package name, so we can actually distribute them parallelly. And it was decided that we will implement it uh, in OpenSUSE, but that, that happened after some discussions internally. So if you see some linkage to, to uh, Jira, you know, definitely uh, there is some discussion happening on background. Also, uh, if you would get to submitting the submit request to Slash, it's always important to reference this Jira. So if I would be updating Boost, I would always, you know, and we will guide you in the code request, which is why I think that you it, it's good that we would use that. Uh, we would actually say that you need to use this reference in the submission in case that you want to uh, submit it to Slash. Otherwise, it will get rejected. I will have to get back to you and you will have to resubmit. So if you do that ahead of the time, that will save you a lot of time. Right? But again, you will learn this all uh, if you open the request. So any, any questions? Should I open the chat? But I'm afraid that if it's live, then I will have echo on my site, right? 
comments. Sorry, dark lag. I, I don't think you'll have any echo. And actually, I'm, I'm not sure if your view sees the chat on the. Yeah, I can see the chat. Yeah. So, well, uh, so any questions? So basically, code open source or uh, slash leap slash features if you need something complex that touches sleep packages. Uh, you know, to figure out whether some dependency that you may need to update is from source, just go to the open source project as I showed you. Go to inherited packages, type the dependency that you are looking for, my library or Qt something. You will see if it's coming from backports. You can freely update it, basically, or freely. You have to make SR. We actually go through staging. We review it. We make sure that it doesn't break the product. But generally, we don't have to go uh, to another instance. We are just doing it publicly, and it will be probably straightforward unless you have some, you know, as long as it builds. <laughs> and uh, you can mute that. Ah, good point, Ari. But I can I can see <laughs> I can see the comments, but somehow I cannot maybe. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now I can comment too, which is perfect. So I don't even have to go to you, YouTube. Uh, so yeah, as I said, uh, if you can submit it to backports, you know, then we go for staging. So everything builds perfect. We will accept it. You, we may need like legal review, which which I'm doing on Leap. Um, that will probably delay you by half a day or so. You know, it's manual review process. I just look, and if I don't see anything suspicious, I just approve it. But uh, if the package is in Tumbleweed and are, there was already a legal review, that, that's not a concern. Uh, and then it's really up to, does it build? And if it doesn't build, we have to fix the build dependencies, which will be the case. Because keep in mind that sometimes we are held back by certain versions of libraries in Celeste, right? They may be older than you know what's in Tumbleweed, and that's on purpose. Uh, enterprise customers don't want, you know, always latest, greatest, right? They want like transition over the time and so on uh, and some scheduled updates. And uh, if, if you need to update something, then we have to talk. And ideally in the feature request, you can also submit the request or we can request to have it updated from the C side. And it will take a little bit longer, which is basically the difference from Tumbleweed. So it's really the coordination, making sure that we are not breaking anything from this. You can't expect that, uh, I don't know, so this will change the kernel to latest, right? Uh, in in some some update release, so we have to be realistic here. Lubash, would you mind just mm -hmm. partially discussing the kernel? Because I know that's that's a topic yeah. that people don't quite understand. I think so. so kernel so. kernel is tricky, right? So uh, leap leaps um, since fifteen three, we are actually reusing the very same kernel from Slash. So that means not just that we take the sources, we rebuild it, but we literally take binaries. So the same binaries which were built internally in IBS, we sync them over inherited to leave, and we have the very same kernel standard, right? This is less. Uh, and uh, we can do, we can build K-mods for it, for example, which is, uh, you, you will actually find some of them in OpenSUSE Leap 15.6 project for 15.6 and, you know, 15.5 for 15.5 and so on. Uh, but uh, the difference is that that kernel is signed actually with, with Suzuki, not with OpenSUSE, and that, uh, that's a little bit tricky. Uh, we, we are doing things uh, in Leap that we kind of treat the signatures of OpenSUSE and SUSE on the same level. Therefore, this works also with RPM packet signatures and so on, but it's something to be aware of, okay? So, uh, and all the modules are actually done in that way as well. So if you would fire the kernel, for example, for your own purpose, you have to expect it will be signed with something else. But I guess uh, Doug, Doug was more referring to the version, right? Yeah, yeah. If you if you really want updates, right? So uh, we are held back, right? Like whatever SUSE decides that they want to use as a kernel, leap has as well. You can you can enable uh, if you if you want newer kernel and you are fine with not being able to run, run like proprietary drivers from NVIDIA. Uh, you can actually use kernel of the day, uh, which is uh, one of the repos in OBS, and you can have newer kernel. But we are kind of, our kernel is really given by what's currently in the latest release, SUSE Linux Enterprise to the date, right? So the latest is 15, uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise 15 SP5, and currently developed is 15 SP6. So Leaf 15.6 beta has kernel from SUSE Linux Enterprise 15 SP6, period. Slash has two types of releases and they have TikTok model, right? So they have a feature release followed by a little bit more conservative, conservative release. Typically you would see the kernel update in the feature release while, you know, we wouldn't probably touch the kernel version, not the release, but the version uh, in the maintenance release. And that's something to be aware of. Also uh, expect that if 
we would be trying to package something for Leap, for example, and there is like a LTS version of the software versus like latest, greatest, we would always go for the LTS, which is the same with kernel, which is the same with KDE. And that's 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 the material for the leap. We really want to have stuff which is supported long term and kept up to date and secure. I think this would be basically what we would like to have leap in, and kernel is a good example of that. Any yeah. any questions to that? Mm -hmm. Well, so, and sometimes you know you'll see like when we come out with a new leap, uh, you'll see like why didn't they pick this LTS kernel? You know, <laughs> I, think the, I think there's just it's like understanding of what. Exactly, exactly. Like Suze, you know, Suze has some discussion with partners, right? They have some expectations. We have some expectations. They request something. We want to be, we want to reflect these uh, requests, uh, do some internal decisions. And there is probably pretty good reason why we actually have certain version, but don't, don't get fooled. Uh, so we, uh, you know, especially in feature releases, we actually backward a lot of like drivers and everything from newer versions. That's what we are paid for. So you may see fairly I don't want to say old, but older version of kernel, but it's very likely that you know it has like backported stacks from from newer versions based on these requests from partners. If you if you need particular a feature, you know particular driver, and we are in like alpha phase, you can you can make that request and we can actually consider it for sure. Just depends on how much does it burn us, right? Like, do we need that change? And if if so, we will do it, and that's that's how it works. So, so if you complain that something is not in there and you didn't request it in the alpha phase or, or you know, during beta phase, then, then you know, don't blame us, right? <laughs> you, you've seen where to request. <laughs> also, also, like, uh, I think, like, it's very important to emphasize when, when we get these alpha and beta phases, like, it's the point to test this stuff, you know? I, I know that sometimes... Beta is already too late, right? So, uh, well, test, yes, in beta. Request in beta is kind of getting late. Uh, and that's where we are getting again to the sleep part. So testing is perfect. You don't want to test early alphas. I do, uh, because it gives me some idea of like how the product is doing. But uh, you want to install it with beta. But uh, again, if you are a contributor, you want to check a little bit earlier, because with beta, ideally, all features should be inside the slash. So Slash uh, has several betas before it goes to public beta. Our leap 15.6 beta corresponds with the very last public beta, as they call it. And you know it gives us like maybe half a year since like June to I would say February to actually get as many changes in as possible. So you know if I will tell you you are late for 15.6, requested for 16.0, which will be the, uh, the next version, right? And now is maybe a good time if you need to do something large on Slash side. You know, if you need to significantly change something, this would be a good time, typically for next release. Uh, and so, so all the changes in before beta, after beta, mostly bug fixes. As far as community packages go, we have flexibility. As far as sleep packages go, I can make a request. I cannot guarantee it will be accepted, maybe rejected because you know it's risky change. Uh, it would rebuild 50, 50 packages, five hundred packages, four thousand packages in Slash. Uh, you know, updating glibc, don't don't expect that after beta. We've done it in RC in the past, but it was exception. Uh, yeah, stuff like that. It has proper time, and that's before public beta. Cool. Well, I think we could probably call it. Yeah, I would call it. Uh, guys, so remember, if you complain that something's not fresh in Lee, request it early. If you need to touch some sleep packages, please open feature in code open uh, code open org slash leap slash features. Tell us what you are trying to do. We will help you out. You don't have to study all these wiki pages. We will point you to, you just have to ask, but please expect that you have to do your part. We will be happily assisting you, but somebody has to do the work. <laughs> and it can't be one person, right? And that's all. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, reach out to me or write comments on the YouTube videos. We, have, we will be checking it or just yeah join factory mailing list and we can have that discussion there too or join our community meeting or go to the bar or, yeah or and, uh, the bar. did i mention it are we, are we still live we have that leap feature review meeting every monday it's mentioned on the wiki page okay um the leap packaging it's every monday you can also find it at calendar open to the org which i i'm going to show because people need to see that 
you want to see Calendar OpenSUSE.org, every Monday we have a feature review meeting. You can just join by clicking and you can say, hey, I'm Jane Doe. I need to update my package and I'm blocked on this three libraries. Please help me out and we will, we will help you out. Tools may not be perfect, but we are here to help. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Lovash. Thank <laughs> you.